Christ is in our midst. He is our Happy peace, This, of course, is the Sunday of the Cross. Halfway, right? Halfway to Great Lent. And uh, this is one of the uh, great feasts of our parish, isn't it? Uh, where we process with the cross. And we, I think by now, understand a little bit about the theology of the cross and the understanding of the cross within the, uh, within the life of the church. Ultimately, the cross is not so much a symbol of suffering, although it is, but also a, a symbol of deliverance <coughs> from suffering in the resurrection. I have overcome the world, says, says our Lord. I have overcome, he says to his disciples. And overcoming it, what does he do? He destroys that last enemy. He takes on the most fearful enemy of all, and what is that? It's, what's, it's death, or another way of putting it would be, what's going to happen to me when I die? It's ultimately, of course, a victory over the power of him and over the power of destruction. So, brothers and sisters, uh, we're told in today's Gospel reading uh, to take up our cross and to follow Jesus, to take up our cross. Now, uh, I suppose one way of doing that would be to uh, ask ourselves uh, just what is the cross that I must carry? And uh, I'm going to talk about one particular area here that I think... Uh, can lead to a better understanding of what it means to uh, take up the cross and follow our Lord. Because if we don't do that, uh, we end up doing just the opposite. And that is uh, seeking not so much the salvation of our soul, but more the salvation of our personal needs. You know, our greed, our, our uh, sort of disposition towards that or disposition towards this, going down lots of rabbit holes, you know, trying to figure out how I can get what I what I want and what I need. We don't want to live a life like that, do we? It's really time consuming. And sometimes when we're running down those rabbit holes, we really do think this is the right hole to go down, you know. That we defend our rabbit holes very, very uh, you know, vociferously. Uh, only to find out that at the end it's just a dead end. And in the meantime we made life pretty difficult for ourselves and also very difficult for the people, for the people around us, right? So, we don't want that. In fact, uh, if you're here, uh, you've already said, I think, in your heart and in your mind that, that you want Christ, you know, and only Christ, because who's Christ? Christ is the one who destroys death. Christ is the one who raises the dead. Christ is the one who heals. Okay. And so, uh, I'm just going to talk about one little aspect of this, or one little element of finding our way to Christ so that we can, in fact, uh, be actively taking up our cross, doing those things which are, are well-pleasing to God. And sometimes it does involve denying ourselves, but ultimately, ultimately the blessing that comes from denying ourselves is, is very great, and very comforting, and very healing. Let's talk a little bit, though, brothers and sisters, about one such aspect of that, and that is the ability to receive corrections. Uh, I've read many times, and I've said this to the congregation uh, over the years, that, uh, that the saints love correction. The saints love correction. I'll tell you one thing. Well, let me put it another way. Do you like to be corrected? <laughs> raise your hand if you do. <laughs> Thank you, you're honest. And I'll raise my hand with you. I, I don't, right? I don't. Correction is a very hard thing to uh, accept. And yet the saints say, uh, and we're read, we read in the fathers of, of the church, the saints love correction. What would it be like to, to uh, kind of move about our lives and actually be grateful if somebody points something out to us? It really needed to be uh, changed. Because, of course, what we find ourselves being instead is very, very intensive, right? We guard our lives, uh, something, very fiercely. We guard our, our attitudes and our, our understand what we've appropriated ourselves to be in, in a very, in a very uh, fierce, and a very fierce and, and determined, and a very determined way. And so part of the problem is, is 
is, is receiving it. Now, one way that we try to uh, somehow modify correction is to get everybody else around us to understand what we really are like. You know? And I remember once, uh, on a number of occasions, somebody saying to me, not in this parish, <laughs> but uh, would simply say, I really need uh, to, to explain to you about what's going on in my life. And I said, well, that's fine. Uh, but he said it would take, it would take all day, and I said, how about an hour? And he said, an hour? You know, an hour? I need all day, I need hours to explain to you what's going on inside of me. And I said, uh, somehow I said to him, that seems self-defeating. Because even if I understood everything there was about you, I don't know if that's going to increase your ability to receive God's correction. So how does God correct us? That's the real question. And it's true that he corrects us to the uh, to other people, the brothers and the sisters that are standing or, or sitting right now beside you. He corrects us through each other. But then we go through this process of, well, I'm going to receive correction from some, you know, the more intelligent somehow, the people that I like, but not from others. I wouldn't receive them. And yet I have to tell you, brothers and sisters, that so often the best advice and the best corrections I've ever received are from people who really struggle in their own lives. Who really struggle in their own lives. So our ears have to be open, and our antenna has to be uh, turned in the right in the right uh, uh, directions. Probably the area where I think of this uh, process of mutual correction or mutual improvement, whatever there used to be a society in the American in, in America called. Wasn't there one called the Mutual Improvement Society? Is that still around? I don't know. Something from the 50s. Let's go join the Mutual Improvement Society. Okay. But, but, but one way or the other, in family especially, uh, the defenses get up very quickly, and it's very hard, uh, very hard to uh, uh, correct each other without feeling particularly, uh, particularly defensive. So we have to, I think, if we want to allow ourselves to be corrected. Number one, as I just said, have our antenna up. And number two, we have to go to war a bit with our, with, let's just simply for now call it our egos. Okay. That part of us that, that, that guards so, so, uh, so faithfully our own space, our own understanding of, of, of who we are. And uh, all I would tell you is that you're not going to and we all know this, we're not going to change the world around us in this regard. We're not going to change the crowd around us. Or we can, oh, well, here's another option. If you don't like the people that are giving you correction of the Holy Cross, you can always go to another church, you know, and, and maybe they'll be more enlightened. Maybe they won't. And if you don't like it there, you know, then you're back and forth. And, and it just, you know, this kind of thing kind of circulates in our minds over and over again, especially when we go through difficult times. But uh, I think uh, if we want to look at some model that would give us, I think, the best example of what receiving correction could possibly be like, it would be the experience that's given to us by God in the form of the sacrament of confession. All right. Because if you look at the way we come together in the sacrament of confession in the Orthodox Church, it shows us the way we ought to, uh, of course, confess what would we do. We stand before, when, 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 when someone receives confession in the Orthodox Church, do we stand and look face to face with the priest? No, we don't. And it's, it's interesting because sometimes, especially not so much with people that are raised in the church, but sometimes I'll have to say, you know, for, for newcomers, I'll you to confess towards the gospel. Okay, in other words, I'm, I'm standing here and the person and standing there. We, we both have our focus on Jesus Christ, on the Gospel. For I, <coughs> the priest who is listening to your confession, is a sinner also. And if you read these prayers, if you read the prayers that the priest says, you know, the long form of confession, and the priest is, is kind of instructing the person ahead of time through this text, one of the things he says is, go ahead and unburden yourselves to me, fear not, for I am also a sinner. Okay. So here we are in this mutual process 
not one person confessing, and the other person standing aloof and kind of going, yes, yes, yes. That, that could be a problem. You know? No, we are both together, sort of mutually confessing before God, gazing upon the gospel, or the teaching, or the teaching of the Christian life is given, or the understanding of the knowledge of the resurrection is given, or the understanding of the knowledge of the crucifixion and the cross is understood, and we're confessing, we're listening, we're, in effect, we're confessing together. I think this is a real important model for us. It's that mutuality of understanding. We are all sinners. And within the life of the church, that's why it's important to treat each, to treat each other with a tremendous amount of understanding. As it says, you know, we are here to what? To uphold each other's sin. You know, to essentially help out with each other's burdens. And we, when we show those burdens mutually, we understand them, we understand them together. But in the right of confession, it's important to understand <coughs> that we must uh, really set aside uh, this desire to be defensive and to rationalize. And I know when I'm confessing to myself, there's always, there's always this temptation to do something like this. Well, I did this. But on the other hand, the, you know, you know, the, the reasons that I that behind this, I'm thinking, are important for the priest to understand that I'm confessing. Well, to, to some degree that's true, of course. You know, to some degree it's true. But I notice myself that this desire to rationalize almost immediately, or somehow modify, uh, before God, who knows all things, and before a priest, or not before a priest, but along with a priest, who by this time has heard that this, this old guy you're looking at here, probably heard thousands of confessions. And, and, and you know the story of, of Bishop uh, Callistos, so I'll tell you again. But one night, uh, uh, one of the older priests uh, in his, in his uh, area was listening. I think it was a monk priest or something. He was listening to confessions long into the evening. And after it was over, he came up to Callistos, who was uh, 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 you know, waiting for him, or maybe then the Father Timothy. And Father Timothy, where that is, and, and said, uh, you know, mopping his brow, he said, it's really interesting, he said, but there are no new sins. It's the same old thing. Whereas goodness and life and joy is created. It's new. You know, you know it's new. I've never seen that before. I see, I see that at the church all the time. I've never seen an icon like that before. Or when we went uh, to the, you know, sledding yesterday, uh, we're watching little uh, little Amelia go down, with little Amelia and Maria, Marie go down the hill together. You know, with, with incredible. I've never seen that before. You know, that, that's all of that is joy. All of that is is, uh, is uh, or, or, or the building of our church and, and, and the plans that come over the years. I've never seen anything like that before. I've never seen a community like this before. You know, th th these are all the good things. But uh, sin is the same old. Uh, you know, down we go in the same old patterns. And that's all we were saying. So when we stand together in confession, and this is coming back to the ability to accept correction, we stand before God together, knowing the fact we are all we are all sinners and we all want one thing. We want we want forgiveness. We want healing. And we can receive it. And we do receive it through this wonderful sacrament of confession. So let's remember, brothers and sisters, especially during this uh, this Lenten season, that if we want to kind of open ourselves up to correction and not just be kind of an uptight character who runs around all the time and says, don't say that, don't say that, snaps at our, snaps at our children, snaps at our, our, our spouses, you know, snaps at our friends. Father Lawrence, uh, I go to Father Lawrence Russell for confession. You know, some of you have met him, you know, when he comes to me, uh, periodically, although he's the diocesan confessor, he has another. But we, we can hear each other's confessions. Uh, and, uh, and, and we've gotten to the point, we know each other so well now, that when we hear each other kind of getting into these these rabbit hole type uh, experiences, we'll kind of, oh, here we go again. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, you know, I can't find my wallet. Or, you know, uh, you know, 
I want, I, 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 I want to go to a place that, where I can eat what I want to eat, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just a, so we mock each other in that sort of foolish way. But on the other hand, I'm kind of thankful that we know each other well enough through this uh, ability to mutually correct each other, I hope, you know. Uh, to, so, so developing relations like that that are honest, but not just honest for the sake of being honest, you know, but honest for the sake of doing the will of God's mercy, you know, for that, for that purpose. So here we are, brothers and sisters. Uh, th th I, I would say this is one way in which we take up our cross and we, and we follow our Lord. We are, in, in a sense, it, is, it, is not, it requires a degree of, of honesty. But let us take up our cross in this, in this regard uh, and, and receive correction. Uh, correction that is given by the community, Correction is given by the gospel. Correction is given through confession. Correction is given to God, by God in our hearts. All of these things are uh, coming at us all the time. And uh, all we have to do is acknowledge it just a little bit and lower this, this resistance. Nobody's out there to get you. Okay? Nobody's out there to get you. Really. I mean, there's a few people that may be. <laughs> but, but you've got other people around here that can help you with that. But you don't understand. No one's out here to get you. Uh, we're all in the same boat. Uh, we're all in the same boat. All right? Christ is in our midst. <laughs>